Welcome to the Mayor TV Parsha Talks here in our studio, Rav Menachem Weinberg. Shalom, Rav Menachem. Shalom again. I'm Menachem Listman. Today, the eighth day of Hanukkah, uh, one day after the seven days have uh, completed on the passing away of our it's late... Zot Hanukkah. This is the essence of Hanukkah on the last day. And we, have to re- name. and we have to remember our dear great rabbi that passed away eight days ago. Right. Rabbi Tzvi Kleiman, in righteous and blessed memory. Rabbi Kleiman developed the English department of Mechomer, what it is. For over 30 years he was involved, I believe. And his special sincerity and devotion, his endless love to his students over the years. And, and his love of Torah. You know, when he, he would come in and uh, even after he wasn't teaching a regular class, he would sit with the boys uh, day after day and help them in their studies with the Talmud. And I remember like yesterday, how if uh, I brought a source and they were studying a, a Rishon, a, a commentary, which uh, he hadn't seen before, his eyes would light up and he would be excited like a little child the, out of a new Torah insight till the end of his life. Literally, his children, may they live and be well, told me at, their, at the Shiva when they were sitting in mourning, the fact that after he quote-unquote retired as the director of the department, the fact that he would be able to come in day after day for so many years, and study with the students, they said that added life to his life. That gave him light. That gave for him sure, life. For sure. And it gave so much to, to our students and to all of us, mm-hmm. uh, having, having uh, contact and having daily uh, communication with uh, such a big Talmud Chacham, someone who very much was so dedicated to Torah and to his students. He went and traveled to, if there was a wedding of one of the students, he traveled the, the whole country and uh, he didn't miss a wedding if, if he was able to. That's right. So we're... We're very thankful to the Kadosh Baruch Hu that we had so many good years with Rabbi Kleiman. And uh, we certainly can learn from his tremendous devotion, sincerity, love of his students, the love of the Torah, and the love of Machon Meir. And that will be light for the staff, light for the students to continue going on the objective of uh, bringing ourselves and our students closer to uh, Ribbono Shalom, the master of the world and bringing the redemption of the Jewish people closer. His memory be a blessing. Amen. 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 So what, Rav, would you want to deal with the so eighth we are the last day of Hanukkah, Hanukkah, so we light one candle. Um, according to Beit Shammai, we're lighting only one candle. According to Beit Hillel, we're lighting the full, power, powerful eight candles. Um, but the idea is to try to take something of Hanukkah, of the lights of Hanukkah, with us. Uh, maybe one candle, like Beit Shammai says, we finish up with uh, only one on the last night is something a little more manageable. We can carry it with us into the dark winter months that are coming. And um, the lights of Hanukkah remind us that there are miracles in the world, that there is hope, and of course the, the, the burning oil of the Torah will continue to uh, enrich our lives in the coming months. And in addition, the fact that we added one light each and every night we're adding we'll another stage of development. There's development. It's a process. We have to be patient with ourselves, but know that we have a schedule, we have a plan, and we're spiritually developing our lives in our ethical connection to our Torah, to our nation, to our land, stage by stage, going up the ladder until we reach that special number of eight, where as opposed to seven, the night before, which represents the natural number, the seven-day week, the seven... Uh, uh, the number seven is seven months, seven years of uh, the cycle, the agricultural cycle. The number eight is the above nature, the supernatural yeah. number. Yeah. The Gemara says, Ma'alim Kodesh ve'emoridin, when you're talking about the matters of uh, worship of Hashem, you should always try to increase. If you find five minutes to learn Torah this week, next week ten minutes. If you give tzedakah this amount now, next time, if at all possible, you'll increase that a little more. And uh, always your, your awareness, your, your striving should always, uh, in matters of Kodesh, Ma'alim ba Kodesh, should always try to go higher and higher. Okay. So that's what the number eight is telling us, to go above and beyond. We have these spiritual wings, we want to climb up, as the words of Rav Kook. In we have more power than we know, more power than we know. Baruch Hashem. So we know that this, this holiday, the lights of Hanukkah, are going to inspire us. To know, to go according to the special treasureness of the nation of Israel, the Skula Eloki, the divine treasure that the Greek Assyrian Empire didn't want to accept, didn't want to uh, understand that there's something above the human intellect. And we know there is. Where are they today? 
And where are we now? Obviously. Not only did Maccabi beat uh, the, the, the Greeks in basketball, but uh, they did. that can go up and down. You know, <laughs> one year this, one year that. But they, the, the Jewish culture is alive and, and still enriching us so many years later. And um, we have a lot to, uh, to be proud of and to continue to delve into and to develop the spreading the light of Torah and the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the supernatural within the natural world. Yes. So therefore, our dear viewers, we hope that you too, like us, will try to internalize the great lights of Hanukkah in making our winter, this coming winter, more potent, more stronger in our connection to Torah, to mitzvot, to tefillah, to doing kindness, showing the light of your happiness, your, 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 your good mode to people. So Bezat Hashem, we're all going to go forward. Okay, so maybe uh, now we'll turn to a few words about the Parsha. Coming parshas, parsha Vayigash, Vayigash Elav Yehuda, the encounter, the climactic encounter we've been uh, reading and learning about the story of Yosef and his brothers. Maybe this uh, just to remind the viewers where we're holding. Sure. Right. Yosef has now turned into mm -hmm. become a great leader, the viceroy, the second in charge of uh, the great empire of Paro. Before him, he was a, he was sitting in 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 the dungeon in 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 slavery and in in, in the, in the cell, darkness. In the darkness. <laughs> And now he's risen up by the help of God, the grace of God, and he sees that it's the hand and the work of God. And his brothers, who don't know where he is, he's disappeared. He's, they don't know exactly where he is. 22 years have passed. And now there are two years of, of this tremendous uh, hunger, this uh, tremendous hunger that's going on in the Egyptian empire and country. And Yaakov, the father in the land of Canaan, has no other choice. He cannot survive. He's sending his sons down to buy food. And there Yosef, with he his intelligence... He sets a trap for them, actually. After, of course, he saves the Egyptian economy, the brothers come down to ask for food, and he recognizes them. He sets a trap and for them. And they don't recognize him. <clears throat> and the trap is set up that he wants to bring down his youngest brother, Binyamin. He and Binyamin, the sons of Rachel. Right. And he wants to try to create a situation by which maybe two things. A all of his family will come down. And that will be a fulfillment of what? Of God's prophecy to Avram Avinu. That surely you shall know that your, your children, your, you'll be foreigners in, in the land that's not yours. And also B, that everyone will be there to bow down before and fulfill the dream that he had. Right, the dream was perhaps a prophecy that had to be prophecy. fulfilled. And, and um, therefore the trap is set. He yeah. sets up Yosef, I'm sorry, Bin, he sets up Binyan with a silver goblet in his backpack or something, and then they catch him on the road. So maybe more than even just trying to fulfill the prophecy that the Jewish people would have to be a, uh, foreigners in a land which is not theirs, uh, Yosef was perhaps trying to test his brothers to see how are they going to treat their youngest brother, the brother who was of a different mother, Binyamin, when they're alone with him. Will they rectify where their flaw showed up, where they didn't? where they were able to give up their brother. Even though they thought maybe halachically and legally and ethically that their brother Yosef is maybe endangering their liberties and their lives, but here, whatever the mistake, are they correcting that mistake or not? That's what Yosef, right. you're saying. Right. And already at the end of last week's partial, we see Yosef breaks down. As soon as he hears the brothers, he understands what they're saying in Hebrew. Uh, they don't know that he's listening in. And when they say, oh, this terrible thing has befallen us, probably because we're guilty of that crime which we committed so many years ago. They bring it up and they feel Avala uh, that we're we heard guilty. our brother's cries and we sat there continuing our meal and we sold him down to Egypt. So Yosef already is feeling that um, perhaps he's going to uh, turn the tide. Perhaps he's going to accept his brothers once again, but they don't know that. What Yehuda knows is that he's going up now to plead his case in front of the viceroy of Egypt who's been difficult with them and has just threatened them all uh, to be uh, enslaved and to be thrown into the... Uh, and it's the same Yehuda that's, that's destined to be a king. And here I counted the times that he's pleading and saying, I'm your servant, Avdecha. Twelve times he's submitting himself. He's ready to give up his future life perhaps as the king of Israel in the future. But it can't be that we're not going to make every effort in order to free our brother Binyamin. And here it is, two giants, Judah, Clash of the Titans, and Yosef. 
the, four, the future Mashiach ben David and the future Mashiach ben Yosef are meeting and he's speaking Daber, Yidaberna, harsh words, it has to be. It's unjust to have Yosef, I'm sorry, to have Binyamin in prison. What did he do wrong? I'm What's, willing to take his place. I'm willing to take his place, let him go, otherwise our father in the land of Canaan is going to die. He's grieved for already so many years. Remember, when the, when the event happened and all the children came to comfort their father, he was not able to be comforted. He, wasn't, he didn't agree to be comforted. And now, if God forbid Binyamin doesn't come home, what's going to happen to him? What, what, what amazing Judah event. says, my father will die. He's afraid that his father will die. If he, he doesn't bring Binyamin home, or Binyamin doesn't go home. And what does, when Yosef realizes that really Yehuda, he and his brothers have rectified, have corrected their, their, their flaw, their sin. He can't see, God forbid, them being embarrassed in front of all the people around them. What does he ask? He sends out everybody. Sends every, send everybody out of the room. He cares for their integrity. He cares for their... Uh, their, their, their tremendous sensitivity. Tremendous that sensitivity they, that he shows. has. Right. And then he just and he reveals himself. cries out and reveals yeah. himself. Ani Yosef. Ha'odavichai? Is dad still living? Maybe they were uh, pulling a fast one on me by telling me that, they, that, he, that he was alive. Maybe he's really not alive. Maybe they were, they were lying to me. Maybe they're going to say, okay, maybe forth. bring him back. Bring him here. Yeah? His concern bursts forth. The first question, ha'odavichai? And the brothers, they're, they're so surprised. Can't even say anything. I can imagine just looking at them. These giants, future leaders of the Jewish people, they're they're tre- they're they're in a state of it. They're 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 terrified. Nivalumi panav. And now these amazing words we have to share with our viewers. What Yosef says to his brothers. You're you're the brothers that you sold me down to Mitzrayim. That's you, what you think. You think you. You uh, think you sold me down to Mitzrayim. It's not true. The word mechira. Sale turns into a different word, words of optimism and view of how God sees these matters. Don't be saddened, he says, if you think you sold me down here. You know why? God sent me down here to provide sustenance. There was a plan. If we connect it to what we started with, perhaps this is like a revelation of a miracle. That we, we talked about the miracles of Hanukkah. We thought things were the worst they can be, the, the darkness was everywhere, and then all of a sudden someone lights a candle in a dark room, you can see. Yehuda thought he was going up against the, the, the most difficult task in the world. All of a sudden, he realizes, really, it was Yosef all along. There was a plan here. God was guiding the events of history. And he was trying to protect the Jewish people by bringing them down and saving them from the famine. So it's almost um, uh, just like the miracle of Hanukkah, to re- recognize that there are miracles in this world and that God is but not only that. Hand. In other words, through our freedom of choice, the actions that we're doing, Everything we see how we God do. is working through. It's part of a plan. Part of part is working through us, through the the, the children, the tribes of, of Yaakov, and He's working through us today as well. Right. As Rabbi Tzvi Yehuda would teach, leave all im kel to 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 do our work with Hashem, on behalf of Hashem. And Everything he, that we do essentially becomes miraculous. Becomes part of the miracle the guiding hand of Hashem in history. So that's a great lesson for us that we want to share with our viewers, to see how through the freedom of our actions that we're doing, day in and day out, weekly in and weekly out, it's all part of a great divine plan of Am Yisrael returning to their land, turning to their de- getting closer to their days of redemption, and bringing ultimate good to the entire world. And if Yosef and Yehuda can get together, the two brothers, so the, we have Mashiach ben Yosef, and Mashiach ben David, the two uh, messiahs which will come and uh, save the Jewish people, redeem us. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Thank you for being here.